morning i hope you're doing really really well um i feel like i've been talking about this forever migration gravel race certainly at home i've been going on and on and on and on and on about it for ages to my partner so sorry sam but finally it is time for me to fly for, fly to africa so in this video i'm going to take you through my prep i'm getting a bike fit i'm getting custom uh, insoles for my shoes. I'll also be going through my um, kit list, packing up my bike and going through the nutrition and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you find it interesting. If you've got any questions, then um, let me know. And I think that there's going to be like a tracker for me when I'm racing in Africa. So if I remember, which I probably won't, if I remember, I'll post a link to my dot so that you can follow my progress. So, it is a week until I go to Kenya for Migration Gravel Race, which is a four day gravel stage race in the Masai Mara. We are gonna be doing long races all day and then camping out in these sort of safari camps that they've put up I believe it's going to be absolutely amazing but I am feeling a little bit nervous about the whole endeavor there's just so much to consider and so much to plan and uh, there's so much needs doing like I've spent the last few weeks sorting out things like visas and transfers and um buying membership to a flying doctor's service over there, all sorts of things to consider. I mean, it's really not such a straightforward endeavor, but it's gonna be so, so, so worth it. So I just popped into Exeter Travel Clinic where I had a whole load of vaccinations. I'm ordering my malaria tablets online and then on Friday, I'm getting a few more vaccinations, uh, jabs and stuff from the NHS. What am I getting? Tetanus, typhoid, and hepatitis A. Well, hopefully I'm not getting them. I'm getting the jabs so that I don't get them. You know what I mean. What I'm gonna do now is head over to Bike Fit Exeter where he will have a look at my position on the gravel bike and figure out um, where I could improve it. Obviously, we're not gonna make enormous changes the week before the race, but I do want to be as comfortable as possible and having heat molded lake shoes will be a big help as well. I know that strictly speaking, you're not meant to use new equipment on a long race. So maybe getting new shoes is stupid, but the alternative is that I wear my old shoes, which really suck and hurt my feet. So I think a nice fresh pair of lakes can only be a good thing. Anyway, we better go because I'm probably meant to be there around about now and my bike is in the back and it's not even ready. I need to take off the uh, suspension fork because I don't think I'm gonna race with that. And I'm gonna swatch my wheel, switch my wheels over, etc., etc. Can you tell that my mind is just all over the place? I don't know if anything I've just made makes any sort of sense. Let's just go get the bike fit. <laughs> <laughs> So Holly has custom molded the insoles and then they have a bit of a trim before going into the lake shoes. So this is just pressure mapping on your saddle, so we'll be able to see um, where you sit for your saddle, where you're putting the pressures and stuff. Pressure going through is good numbers, but here you can see this is your centre of mass movement, so you're putting a lot more pressure through your left side. Let's see what difference the tweaks have made. Ooh, if I can clip in, I've got new tweaks. Right. Okay. So that red dot there is your centre of mass. So it's oh, moved. Yeah more into the centre. Oh, yeah. So that we've tweaked your back end, so your saddle set back, your saddle height, that sort of stuff. Now we'll tweak the front end and then we'll see what what difference that makes. We've just made some really, well, we've, I haven't, Holly, has <laughs> made some really small tweaks. And when you sat on the bike whilst she changes things around, it's so subtle, 
that you have to really focus in on the sensations in your body and try and work out what feels better or worse because obviously she's no, she knows what she's doing which is working on my feedback as well but just by shifting the saddle position slightly forwards yeah four by five and up by about three minutes. and up a little bit we've shifted where i'm sitting on the saddle it's already much more comfortable and we've not even started on the front end so yay Right, so my bike is ready to go. I should be ready to go, but still a few things that I haven't quite figured out. Thanks to Nick and Holly for helping me out. And yes, to be continued. Right, so next thing that I'm having to organize is my nutrition for the race. Um, I did post a little snippet of me preparing some of the stuff um, on my Instagram and everyone started messaging me saying holy moly that is not enough food for that kind of race um, and I knew that I was only part way through preparing but it still kind of made me panic enough that I phoned up my coach to get a bit of advice so I spoke to Connor at Train Sharp and we put together a bit of a plan that uses products that I'm used to using so nothing that's going to upset my stomach um, but it was kind of overwhelming in a way to have this chat with him and realize finally just how much food i'm gonna to have to take with me and how much i'm gonna to have to carry i had a look at the estimated riding time for the route which is on a collection on commute and i'm really hoping that they have overestimated how long it's going to take because one of the stages they said will take 15 hours I'm hoping that's not the case, but even if the stages are like between eight and 10 hours, that's still an awful lot of carbs that you have to consume and a lot to carry, considering you meant to provide all your own nutrition. So Connor said that I should have every hour, one bottle of carb mix, one gel and one bar, or something that kind of approximates that amount of carbohydrates. So you gotta think that if you're planning for an eight hour stage, that's eight bars, eight gels, and eight sachets of drink mix. So I just started kind of divvying it all up into days, and I'm gonna put it in different bags for different days, and it is so much stuff, and it's making me feel slightly panicky. Let me show you what I've got. I've not even finished doing it. This is not even enough for one day, which is kind of crazy. If I was racing in the UK, for instance, I would definitely not be just taking energy bars and gels and stuff. I'd probably make some white bread sandwiches, stuff that's really easy to digest, maybe rice cakes. But because we're gonna be in the Masai Mara in the middle of nowhere and there's no refrigeration, I mean, obviously I can't take rice cakes. It would just be food poisoning waiting, waiting to happen. Shh, that's my coffee machine. Randomly, shush randomly deciding to clean itself um, anyway so i anyway anyway so i thought it'd be nice to have something a bit savory but the closest i could come to that was nut butter so i've ordered some nut butter sachets from outdoor provisions it's kind of nice to have something that you might enjoy eating within the mix of all these sugary products i would probably also <laughs> saying that i'll probably also take some jelly babies because when you are at a bit of a low point in a race, they are an absolute godsend. So yeah, Jelly Baby's going in as well. Right, I'm gonna have to pause this because I've got to do the school run. Um, we will continue later. All right, so bike setup is all sorted. Shoes are sorted. I've also got a new helmet from Smith, a white one, because normally I ride in a black helmet and I thought that it would be cooler, as in less hot, to ride in a white one. So they have sent me this trace and a new pair of sunglasses. These are the Bobcats. So that's going to look cool. Um, what else am I taking? Let me talk you through it. I'm actually finding the preparation and the packing part of this race, the most nerve-wracking well i mean i'm not there yet so um <laughs> i'm sure the actual race itself will be more nerve-wracking but i'm getting quite a lot of anxiety about the prep for this because you know that i'm i really struggle with organization and i always forget vital stuff so after the east devon trail and that big 
cock up. Um, I am a bit worried about making a big mistake and being um, yeah, caught out in Kenya. So I've been really careful with the packing and I didn't leave it all to the last minute. I've been doing this for days. So let me talk you through what I've got. I've got four sets of head lead kit. One, two, three, four. One for each day. In each bag I have got a jersey, bib shorts, a sports bra and socks. Wasn't planning on wearing a base layer because I don't think I'll need one. It's meant to be at least 25 degrees. Uh, but I have got some spares in this bag in case I want them. I've got arm warmers, a buff, rain jacket, might need that. Also a gilet uh, and gloves, really importantly, I've got gloves. Off the bike, I have got very little because I'm gonna be mainly on the bike and we're limited with how much stuff we can bring. So I've got a pedal head t-shirt, a long sleeve because I wanna mainly wear long sleeves and long trousers so that I don't get bitten by mosquitoes where possible. I've got a merino hoodie made by Chrome. I've got my Arcteryx puffy jacket. I've got a pedal lead rain jacket and I've got some underwear. So basically, I'm just gonna wear the same thing every single day when I'm not cycling. So I don't have to take lots of extras. I've got a spare tire, a sterile kit. This is needles and stuff like that in case I, well, I mean, I'm just hoping this isn't needed, but, um, sometimes they don't have access to sterile or decent equipment, so if I need an injection, I've got nice clean needles. In here I've got mosquito repellent, Tampax, yes, great. Dyrolite, which is a rehydration solution in case I get poorly. Uh, I've got Imodium, which would deal with any poorliness in the stomach area. Some hand sanitizer, some blister plasters, headache pills, sterile solution for cleaning wounds, um, absorbent dressings, bandages, whatnot. I don't know if this is crazy, but I've got a hat that has a mosquito net on it. I'm quite paranoid about the malaria thing. It's been really drilled into me by the NHS nurse, just how careful I have to be. So <laughs> check this out. Um, I don't know if I'll need that or not. I don't know how bad it is, but it doesn't hurt to be prepared, does it? So other than these medical items, I've got bum cream and sun cream, toothpaste, all that kind of thing. After bike, bum cream, a bit of soap and some shampoo. Also a hairbrush. When it comes to food, well, I've tried to be organised with that. I already showed you all the different um, sets of food that I prepare for each day with the bars, the gels, the tailwind, but I've also got jelly babies. My daughter saw these in the car and was like, that's not fair. Why do you get those? I've got cheese, oat cakes for something savoury. I've got my hydration rest. I'm not doing this in a very particularly um, understandable order, but anyway, hydration rest. Parcel tape, I was gonna take gaffer tape, but I can't find any. Um, my medical professional that I was speaking to told me if there's any holes in my tent at night, take them up so the mozzies don't get in. I've got two hats, I know I'm gonna be packing light, but I'm gonna wear one on the plane. And then finally, I've got my GoPro, a point and shoot, all my chargers, and I have got a book to read. Um, when it comes to tools, let me go and grab them. This bit's not super well organised, but um, I'm going to have some time in Nairobi to repack some of this. Plus, you know, I've got spares. I won't be taking all of this on one day of the trail. But if I use something up one day, then I'll repack for the next day. So a multi-tool with a chain breaker, CO2. I don't know if they're going to let me on the plane with these, but you can but hope. Uh, this is just a saddlebag that I'll be putting some of these items in. A spare inner tube, another spare inner tube, tyre levers, some WTB sealant, a valve for the CO2, a syringe for putting in sealant, some lube, a dyna plug, a quick link, a spare mac hanger, zip ties, patches and glue, and a Restrap tubeless repair kit, uh, that's for repairing tyres, a valve core remover and a spare valve. 
that's the lot. Time to pack the bike. Hello socks, making a cameo. Best get this bike pack. Obviously I should have taken my pedals off first. The prep is just about done. So all I've got to do now is get to Africa, get to the Maasai Mara and complete the wildest gravel race in the world. I'm really excited as you can probably tell, but also very daunted. I mean, it's such a huge challenge. Oh, and I just found out that the absolute legend that is Lyle, or is it Lyle, Lyle Wilcox? amazing amazing super strong superwoman she's racing it too so yikes but it's an honor to be racing it alongside her so i try not to let that get in my head too much um anyway yeah i hope you guys are well um wish me luck and uh, next video i guess will be after i get back from kenya bye <laughs>